I now call the East Lyme Zoning Commission regular meeting of July 6, 2023 to order at 7.30 p.m. Could we have the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, First, I'd like to announce um, earlier this afternoon the attorney called and we're having to um, delay the vote on the affordable housing until July 20th, two weeks from tonight. So that will not be on the agenda in case anybody came just for that. Um, just FYI. Um, members here, I'm here, Mr. Granitech. Present. Ms. Jet Harris is ill. Mr. Peck. Yep. Mr. Manning. Here. Mr. Schmidt. Here. Mr. Ginsburg. Here. I believe Ms. Markowitz is not coming tonight. Uh, Mr. Peterson. Here. Uh, Mr. Maholland. Here. Ms. Bang is here. <laughs> Um, Ms. Hardy is not here, but we have um, Ms. Ancha Kalos here tonight. Um, Mr. Ginsburg, since you only sat for like three minutes last meeting, would you mind filling in for? Sure. Thank you. Um, as always, we'll start with public delegations. Public delegations is a time when members of the public are invited to speak to the commission on subject matters that are not on the agenda. Is there anyone here tonight that has something to say? Hello, I'm Mark Christensen, 66 Grassy Hill Road, East Lyme. I own 13 acres with uh, several hundred feet of road frontage up there. Uh, I may soon have to consider an affordable housing project on my land, even though it goes completely against the POCD, which this commission worked on just four years ago and endorsed. That's all. Thank you. Anyone else tonight? <coughs> Hello, uh, Nick Menapace, uh, 38 Hope Street, Niantic. I just wanted to speak briefly. And it's first a frustration I've had in attempting to communicate with, I suppose, with both members of the Zoning Commission and the Planning Commission, not with anything you personally, just a, I have asked about a simple project of, what can we do to get more bike racks in town? Seems like an easy way to reduce the number of, well, cars that are coming in. And when I've talked to members of the Planning Commission, they've told me, well, that's more of something that the Zoning Commission will have to say. When I've talked to members of the Zoning Commission, they've told me, well, that's something Planning Commission has to tell us. And I don't suppose it's anything other than, it seems like it would be a really good idea to put some bike racks in the downtown area or other places around town because it's a great way of reducing the number of cars that need to come in there. And as we've seen, the parking situation is not great. And yeah, it seems like a very easy thing to do. All right, thank you. Thank Next. you. What was your address again? Sorry. Sorry, your address? 38 Hope Street. 38 Hope Street. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here tonight? No? Okay. We'll go on to our public hearing. First, we have the application for Ricky. Ow, excuse me if I didn't pronounce that correctly, for the Spice Club for a special permit for outdoor dining at 239 Main Street, Niantic. Uh, Mr. Mahalan was the legal ad run. Thank you. And then Mr. Granitech will read the memo, please. Uh, from um, from memo from uh, William Mulholland, zoning official, the East Lime Zoning Commission, special permit application 239 Main Street, Niantic, dated July 6, 2023. The applicant, Ricky Au, for the Spice Club, is applying for a special permit to have outdoor dining with liquor at the property noted above. Currently, this is an existing facility 
which has not received a permit to operate under the outdoor dining regulations. Such a permit is required under Section 20.25 of the East Lyme Zoning Regulations. In my view, this is an oversight, and I consider this application a housekeeping item which would bring the restaurant into zoning compliance. Section 20.25 of the regulations provides criteria under items A through L. The permit is required because alcoholic beverages are being served. The actual dining area is located immediately adjacent to the restaurant, and a large sidewalk is used, which is enough space for a few tables. In my opinion, the application conforms to the code requirements in its existing form with the following exceptions. Item D of the regulations requires the dining area to be separated from the public space by a wall or fence or plantings of significant size. At this time, there is no separation. Item G of the regulations addresses closing <coughs> times and entertainment as well as public uh, address system. The commission should clarify these issues. Item H of the regulations addresses lighting. In conclusion, the commission should carefully uh, evaluate the application for compliance with the requirements of the outdoor dining regulations. Mr. Al, would you care to present? Yes, sir. Um, Is that how do we, you put? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so I can put up a, a, some type of um, uh, separation, so that's no problem. So, yeah. Okay. Um, what would that look like? Um, I, I haven't thought about it yet. Um, probably. Um, it does is like a rope fine or like a couple ropes good or you want something more like a fence or Mr. Mahalan. And what, do you have any music or is there any audio? Outside? Mm -hmm. No, there's no mm -hmm. music outside. Okay, and then also lighting. What kind of lighting is outside? Um, outside there's, um, there are some string lights going across around the restaurant okay. and then um, just a little bit of outdoor lighting just underneath the... Uh, yeah. And how late are, do you usually have um, diners outside? Um, Eight o'clock usually, oh. yeah, not, okay. not too late. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, I, um, are large weighted uh, weighted planters um, significant as far as uh, addressing safety issues and traffic? And I know it's a highly high traffic area. Would you, would you be willing to do something in the next, say, 10 days? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Course, yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Is there anyone from the public that has any comments for, against? All right. Do I have a motion to close the hearing? <coughs> so moved. Any seconds? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All righty. Next, we'll move on to the application for Todd Donovan for the clubhouse for a special permit for commercial indoor recreation, individual softball, baseball training at 36 Industrial Park Road, Niantic, Assessor's Map 26.3, Lot 21. Mr. Mahalan was the legal ed run. Thank you. And next we have a memo to read. Uh, from William Mahal, zoning official to the East Lime Zoning Commission, special permit application 36 in Dr. Park Road, dated July 6, 2023. The applicant, Todd Donovan, is applying for a special permit under section 11.2.4, indoor recreation, to operate a baseball and softball training facility at the 36 Industrial Road site. This activity will be uh, will be the primary focus of the business. However, it, it is intended during the winter months to set up indoor pickleball courts to enhance the business revenue stream. The hours of operation during the winter months will be 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. The proposed site... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the proposed site consists of an existing building with 18,400 square feet of area. The structure is essentially divided up into three spaces. 
The front portion of the building is occupied by New England Pump and Valve and Hunter Electric. These businesses occupy approximately 5,000 square feet. The training facility, we use the middle space, which is 6,000 square feet in area. The rear space is occupied by a parcel type center and is uh, 7,450 square feet in area. Parking is provided with, uh, for, with 40 on-site parking spaces as dele delineated on the site plan. I note the existing building was constructed many years ago and the parking was provided for under the parking standards in section 22. These standards require one space for each two employees on the largest shift plus one space for each company owned vehicle. Under these line zoning regulations, the two end users are conforming. This would essentially leave 30 plus parking spaces available for the training facility. Mr. Donovan, the applicant is present this evening and will give a brief presentation. Mr. Donovan. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Todd Donovan. Um, I preside at 23 Sandpiper Lane in East Lyme. Um, I'm a lifelong East Lyme resident. I graduated in the class of 1996. Um, I'm married to a school teacher in the Montville school system, Aaron. Um, I'm father of three boys, Brady, who's 10, Finn, who's eight, and Jack, who's five. Um, I'm very proud of where I come from, and I've set out to give back to the community in my spare time in an effort to provide our youth the same privileges generations prior to me afforded my friends and I. At the moment, I'm currently a town resident, a commercial property owner in town, an advisory board member for the Miracle League of Southeastern Connecticut. I'm the president of East Lyme Youth Basketball. I'm the fundraising coordinator for East Lyme Little League. I'm a commissioner on the Park and Rec Board and also the chairman of the Darrow Pond Subcommittee. And believe it or not, I, I do have a full-time job as well. Um, I've been involved in athletics my entire life, so I have first-hand knowledge of the power of team and sport. And I intend to provide our youth with another option in regards to physical activity during a time where social media, personal devices, and mental health are at the forefront of our societal issues. East Lyme is a town rich in athletic achievement, and in my opinion, is still considered a baseball and softball town. In a generation where American Legion, Babe Ruth, and Little League Baseball is dying around us, this facility will continue to promote youth baseball and youth softball as the centerpiece of our community, as is evident by the dozens of local businesses that you see support our complex and our cause and keep the sport alive for many years to come. Um, in preparation for this, I, I did my due diligence at, at multiple spots and ultimately landed here. Um, part of the due diligence I did at this particular spot um, in hopes of um, getting approvals uh, was I, I met uh, with a contractor alongside of um, building official David Garside and the fire marshal Bill Bundy. Um, we walked the property in and out. We looked at the building, its facilities, its means of egress. Uh, what was to code and what wasn't to code, um, and ultimately, um, I guess with their their blessing prior to approvals, um, decided to move forward at this spot. Um, I think it's a wonderful location for those of you that aren't aware, just based on numbers. Um, it's right next to ABC Gymnastics, which is right next to the Little League field, which is right next to the middle school. Um, so I think it's it's going to be a, a place um, for, for both boys and girls, young and old, um, to hopefully have somewhere to go, especially in the cold winter months. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, um, feel free. I drove by today and it, it did look like there was plenty of parking. Yeah, there is. Hardly yeah. any were used. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's some stuff on the outside they're going to remove for us, but yeah, we're going to, mm -hmm. we, we, we intend on cleaning it up a little bit, uh, adding some paint uh, and to the building it inside. Signage on that. Oops, outside. Wherever Bill allows me to put, put it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any concern about the sort of industrial activities of the pump and well business and pedestrian traffic? Um, equipment and things like that? Yeah, no. I, so, and I wasn't really familiar, familiar with what was inside the business uh, either. So Hunter Electric uses it really just as office space. It's, it's just a, it's a service call place that they put their trucks. Um, New England Pump and Valve, um, it's been there since the 90s. It's a repair shop. None of these businesses have consumers that go in and out um, in regards to like big machinery and stuff. No, I don't have any concerns. 
And in the back, it's also another repair shop, and it's tucked underneath. Um, it's a mail processing and sorting machine repair shop, um, all with less than five employees. So there's, quite honestly, there's not a whole lot of action. Um, hopefully, we kind of spruce it up and give this place a little bit of life. And Parking is sort of separate from the pump and valve. You'll have Absolutely. Yeah, there's, easy yeah. E in and out egress for the... Yeah, correct, on both sides. Oh, okay. Yeah, Multiple doors, yeah. garage doors. Um, yeah, I'm, again, I made sure of that before I got too committed and then realized that financially it wasn't going to be worth anyone's time. Is there is there adequate lighting uh, for when it gets dark early in the winter? Yeah, so uh, one of the contractors that was there that day was the electrician that I would hire to do the work. Um, and we put one of the, the new LED lights um, that you see in many of the new builds. Uh, you know, whether we use 8, 10, or 12, we're not sure yet. But in a facility like this, lighting is everything. You know, because you can't can't really hit what you can't see. So that that'll probably be the most important part of the inside, other than you know the netting. But the lighting is going to be most important. Do you uh, do you see kids walking over from the middle school yes. after school? Or I what? would hope so. That's my plan. Um, you know, you mentioned the hours. Um, I think that'll be fluid. Um, most of these activities will be after school. Um, and until like 9 or 10 o'clock. There used to be a place like this in downtown Niantic. It was called The Pit, Performance and Training. Um, it was in the parking lot near the movie theater. Um, and, uh, you know, I was a, uh, a patron of that with my children. So most of that activity happens directly after school. So, um, you know, I've thought of some after school activities with the kids. You know, we mentioned, you know, speed and agility training just to get them moving. So, again, the, the main component is the baseball and the softball because it's what I know. Um, but there are a lot of ancillary things that we can do on the side in that space that there's plenty of space for and obviously ample parking. Are, are we going to need a, um, a, a walk, you know, the road painted so kids can walk across there? Again, whatever, wh whatever I need to do, I'm, I'm certainly up for it. Yeah, I just want to be sure it's safe for middle school kids that yeah understood when they cross the again it's right next it's right next door to ABC so if there's a I'm, uh, hope to soon introduce myself to them and I got a feeling we'll probably work hand in hand uh, you know with families that have both boys and girls that participate in both sports so I think it'll be a nice neighbor anybody else no good okay thank you okay. so much thank you Is there anyone here from the public that would like to comment? Mark Christensen, 66 Grassy Hill Road. You can't shut me up. Um, I applaud Mr. Donovan's application. I think this is a great thing for the town of East Lyme and the children of East Lyme. There's plenty of parking there. I've worked on that property in the past, and uh, I, I think this is a great thing for you to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else tonight? Thank you. Sorry. So Nick Menapace, uh, 38 Hope Street, Niantic. So it's not really speaking in, in favor or against. It's just something I think uh, Mr. Ginsburg mentioned that the sidewalk does end before you get really near there to that area. It, you know, especially, hopefully that there's lots of traffic of lots of little kids going over to play, or no, I guess it wouldn't be play, but practicing baseball. Um, but it would certainly seem if that was happening, it would be a very nice idea for the town to consider possibly some sidewalks, considering that as of right now, if they're going to a, um, ABC Gymnastics or this list, they have to walk in the street. So that, that's all it really is. It just, again, it would be very, might be something to consider of some more sidewalks would always be great for people so we don't have to worry about any kids you know in the road thank you and maybe some bike racks yes some bike racks <laughs> would be great yes. too anyone else tonight no okay well do i have a motion to close this hearing so moved do i have a second second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay, moving on. Um, our third item had to be withdrawn, the application of Michael Frisbee from Noble Gas Station um, for a special permit for secondary signage. He's doing some refiguring on 
on how big it may be, so he may be in later. So we'll move on to the regular meeting, and we have minutes to approve. Take a couple minutes to look through. The only thing I have, I think Mr. Peterson spells his first name with a C instead of a K on the last page. Under new business, he's mentioned a few times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that we accept the minutes with the change um, in the name. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. We have one abstention and I believe five ayes. Thank you. Um, next, we would have had the, the Kristen Clark um, affordable multiple housing, but our attorney cannot be here tonight, and he was actually needed more time to work on resolutions. So we are continuing to a special meeting on July 20th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. Um, right here at Town Hall. Um, and I could read the formal formal paragraph here. It's for the decision of application of Kristen Clark PE for conceptual site plan review for an affordable housing multifamily residential development pursuant to CGS 8-30G at the property located on Holmes Road, East Lime Assessors Map 55 Lot 30. So again, that will be in two weeks from tonight at 730. So we'll move on to the application for Rookie Owl for the Spice Club for a special permit for outdoor dining at 239 Main Street, Niantic. I think it's great that he's dining outside. Um, does anybody have a comment? I would hope he could put something up in the next 10 days. Yeah, I know it's a little bit of a precarious area. I don't think there's a ton of sidewalk there. And it's sort of, you know, what's his, his restaurant front and sidewalk are right up against the high traffic area in the town town parking lot. So I don't I don't envision a, a fence. I sort of envision large planters, weighted planters for safety and uh, sort of improves the character. I don't really want to see another wood fence. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'm comfortable with, with him working with staff to work that out. Does anybody else have a, an opinion or comment? Or? Well, I agree if staff can figure out a way to do it, then I'm okay. Do we want to have a motion with a time limit on it? I would move approval with a two-week window to come up with an acceptable plan to protect the 
comers and goers, I guess. Do you wanna? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind restating that. I would say moving approval with the condition that there's a two-week window to coordinate a plan acceptable to himself and our zoning officer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? It passed six zero zero. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Next, we have the application for Todd Donovan for the clubhouse for a special permit for commercial indoor recreation, individual softball, baseball training at thirty six Industrial Park Road. Niantic Assessor's Map 26.3, Lot 21. Is there any discussion? Well, I, you know, I'm still, I, I think it's a good idea and I support it, but I think we should make sure that it's safe for kids to be walking over from the middle school. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how to do that without excessive cost. I mean, I think putting in a sidewalk would be um, expensive to ask of Mr. Donovan, and I'm not sure the town has the funds to do it, but at least crosswalks can be painted on the, on the road and things like that. So, you know, as I said, I would still support it, but I think we need to um, work on making it safe. I, I agree with you. Anyone else? Yeah, I mean, I just want to reiterate, too, I mean, if these facilities are often find themselves in industrial spaces, usually because of the size of the facilities. Um, but then again, you have industrial types of activities um, that don't necessarily lend well to pedestrian traffic, children. So um, I, I'm, I fully support it. I just want to make sure that the, that, um, you know, we take into consideration that that maybe the hours of operation are separate from the industrial activities of the um, well pump um, pump and valve um, facility, which I imagine is daytime <coughs> hours, and this may be after school evening hours. Um, but again, I, I you know I, I understand that I appreciate the the issues with traffic and pedestrian traffic and, and industrial activities sort of um, being in conflict. But I think those issues can be worked out. Mr. Mulholland, do you have any thoughts on the safety issue? Any other comments, or do I hear a motion? 
I move to approve uh, the application of Todd Donovan for the clubhouse for special permit for indoor recreation at 36 Industrial Park Road, Nyanic Assessor's Map, 26.3, Lot 21. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for working with Mr. Mulholland on the safety issues. Thank you. Um, again, our next item was withdrawn. It was for Soapy Noble. Um, they may be back at a later date. And next, we actually have a 15-minute presentation by Mrs. Marjorie Meekoff on po the pollinator pathway. Thank you. I'll see if I can get this hooked up. Terry, I may need your help. You don't have a white light on the... Uh... Oh, it, it clicked now. Oh, connected. we did? Yep, so you can go right into your presentation. Oh, thank you. There you go. Thank you okay. very much. I normally give a, um, a longer presentation, but tonight I, I've created a smaller presentation, and I'll try to eliminate the sides if I can. And if you wouldn't mind, just for the record, stating your name and address. I will. I can't get this to work. Anyway, I wanted just to show the main screen. My name is Marjorie Mikoff. I have lived in town since 1979, and I reside at 6 Cedar Ridge Road. Um, and thank you for having me. I'm currently an alternate on the Islam Commission for the Conservation of Natural Resources. In 2020, I resigned from being an alternate on the Inland Wetlands Agency to devote my time and energy to organizing Pollinator Pathway East Lyme, of which I am the founder and president. For short, PPEL is a nonprofit 501c3 organization run solely by volunteers and supported by donations and grants. We promote a science-based land stewardship through educational outreach wherever we are invited. We're also a mobile unit that creates and restores pollinator habitats on public and private land using native plant species. 80% of our field work involves the removal of invasive non-native plant species of which East Lyme, I'm sorry to tell you, has many. Our ultimate goal is to increase sustainability ecosystems throughout East Lyme and to be a resource to residents and town government. We want to create sustainable ecosystems and to do that we mimic the systems of nature. Are any of you gardeners here? Okay. Well, even if you weren't a gardener, there's different regions and hardiness zones that you have to consider when you're gardening. When you're restoring ecosystems, you have to look at the region in which you're working with. In every region on the planet, plants and insects have co-evolved together. Here in New England, native plants that developed here co-evolved with native insects. This process goes back to about 150 million years in the tertiary period. Now these native plants provide food for insects and invertebrates that in turn provide food for native birds and other animals. Native plants provide nectar, pollen, foliage, and seeds to feed native insects, wildlife, and ultimately to us humans. 
This system creates a healthy, sustainable environment for every living thing. The creation of PPEL coincided with the adoption of the Eastline Plan of Conservation and Development in the autumn of 2020. In the POCD, as you know, Section 5 under recommendations, it says in a nutshell, protect pollinator pathways, use native plants, and under Section 6 it reads, reduce harmful pesticide and fertilizer. That's PPEL's mission too. In the summer of 2022, I presented a pollinator resolution to first selectman Kevin Seary. It is based on best ecological practices for sustainable insect and wildlife habitat, exemplifying the recommendations in the POCD, plus science-based practices described by the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station with collaboration from Newtown's Conservative Commission, PPEL members, and members of the East Lyme CCNR, the Commission of the Conservation for Natural Resources. After review, First Selectman Series signed this proposal into an official town document entitled the East Lyme Pollinator Proclamation. We became the seventh town or city in Connecticut to have this guideline for proper land stewardship. I am proud to be in an innovative, forward-looking town. There are currently 85 residents, mostly in town, but some from Waterford and Salem who follow the guidelines in the Pollinator Proclamation. Now, when I first met Anne about a month ago, she had never heard of the Pollinator Proclamation. Uh, did you all receive a copy of that tonight to yes. look at? thank okay. you. Okay. Well, let's start the PowerPoint. Um, okay, we've already talked about me. Uh, we've already talked about our mission, and we know about the plan of conservation and development, which was out extraordinary. Um, what are what is my group? What are what is PPEL doing in town? Okay, can't I can't make it go forward. Okay, I'll do this. Um, that little thing. Oh. Thanks, Lindsay. I'm used to working with the mouse. Thank And just tap that. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, we share, you may have heard of the Giving Garden. Have any of you heard of the Giving Garden? Okay, that's on Fort Church Lane. We use the property uh, from the Baptist Church. Uh, the first part of the giving, first part of that acreage rather, is the giving garden that produces organic food for um, homeless shelters and food. I hate, I hate, okay, thank you. Um, we're in the back part. We actually created a two acre meadow that brings in native pollinators, not honeybees because they're from Europe, they're not native, and they're maintained by hive owners. We're interested in the native insects that our ancestors many years ago were supported by. So we have this two acre meadow on that same property. We also were given the industrial park, which is close to where Todd is talking about. We were uh, given use of that island when Mark Nickerson was in office. It's a 30 foot uh, area and it was loaded with mugwort. We have reduced the mugwort to a manageable condition. I asked the town to stop mowing it in 2018 because I noticed some native plant species were trying to come up in that environment. Uh, what we've done since then is uh, we had professional signage made and uh, under uh, Justin Porter said it was absolutely okay. It's now posted as uh, our roadside test site. And this site is going to be used, or is being used now rather, I should say, for us introducing more native plants that in the future Todd and his crew could introduce on roadside where the liability isn't an issue instead of mowing. It will also increase the pollinator pathway throughout town. 
Last year, we had monarch butterflies, female comes and lay their eggs on the Asclepias tuberoso. They are a specific insect. They only reproduce on uh, milkweed. And so we have a lot of milkweed that just started to come up on its own and we're introducing more. So you can see we have a caterpillar that is a monarch caterpillar and we had two successful uh, chrysalises. Uh, we were asked by Justin Porter to create a native shrub border for the public works building on Capitol Drive, which we did. The plants are really tiny because when you're putting in native shrubs, the tiniest ones have the best chance for survival. That is a very hostile area, full sun, really, um, well, the soil is so-so, but most native plants don't like fertile soil because they, they existed in the Northeast and we're not predominantly known for our most fertile soil here on the coast. So we, we are hoping that um, those plants will do very well. All the plants are for pollinators and wildlife. Uh, we were asked by the police station to create a, a native shrub sustainable garden in the honor of Betty Murphy and we're in the process of doing that. Uh, we've partnered with the York Correctional <coughs> Facility. The warden, Trina Sexton, asked us if we could install a meadow, which we did with the help of biologist Peter Pacone from DEEP. It's an acre, about an acre and a half meadow, and my partner and I selected 32 native species and two grasses to bring in as many butterflies as possible, because that's what the warden really wanted to lure in, butterflies. We also do a lot of educational outreach. Um, you can read here, we mentor the Three Rivers Community College environmental, um, environmental Science and Technology program. We're working with one of their students this summer as an intern um, and so forth. You can read that. Uh, the main thing I wanted to show you after a little bit of our background is why are we doing all this? I mean, we're all retired, we're doing this for free. Most of us are really passionate about improving the environment in East Lyme. And the reason we want to improve that is because we're having a lot of, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, there, there's a decline in our insects, so we're worried about that and we want to make sure that we're going to maintain that balance. So it all comes down to what E.O. Wilson said, that famous biologist, the little things that run the world, and they are the insects. Without insects, we would not have the life that we have today. We can divide insects into three main groups. The pollinators that give us food. We're forgetting about the honeybee because they're not native. The decomposers and the parasitoids. So I won't go into detail on those, but pollinator pathway is predominantly concerned with pollinators. Now these are some of the little things that run the world. We've all seen them here in New England, but we're focused mainly on the pollinators of New England, specifically East Lyme. Okay, let's move to the next slide. So what do they do for us? We survive on this planet because bees and other pollinate pollinators pollinate one-third of the food we eat on an average day. They are responsible for most of the food crops for humans and livestock, our clothing, building materials, medicines, and 90% of the U.S. specialty crops. These are common bees that you will see in your backyard. This is a breakdown of pollinators in Connecticut. Now the 20 bee species that visit tomatoes, a lot of those do that through sonication where they unhinge their wings and vibrate their bodies and the pollen actually falls down. Those are specialist bees that, that do specifically that. So Tom Scott has to rely on a lot of these bees for his apple blossoms, his peaches, and his melons and tomatoes. These are the crops that we get here in Connecticut from native pollinators. We've been, not me, but Yukon and the Agricultural Extension Office has been uh, logging 
bees, bumblebees, native to Connecticut since 1890. And these are our current statistics. So we have a lot in declining. We've lost pretty much the rusty patch. It's gone. Some are stable. And um, my nonprofit wants to keep, uh, keep them from declining. Now, if they were to disappear, which who knows, 50 or 60 years, we're not doing this work for today. We're thinking in the future of the town. Um, most flowering plants would go extinct because there wouldn't be any pollinators to pollinate them. Uh, this would change the total physical structure and energy flow of most terrestrial habitats. That's kind of frightening. Uh, and this would cause the collapse of the food web. Now, we talk about ecosystems. Ecosystem services uh, from both plants and animals form a healthy ecosystem, and that's what PPEL is trying to maintain. This breaks them down into very specific categories, and I'm going to need to get a drink of water. Thank you. So it's concerning because David Wagner, a very uh, gifted professor and entomologist at UConn, um, he is a specialist in soft-bodied insects. He's written many textbooks on them. He was about to leave UConn, and they asked him to stay because of this insect decline. He was going to go out west and write textbooks on the western soft-bodied insects, but instead mm -hmm. he's staying here. And thankfully he is because the, this is his quote from his research. We've lost uh, one quarter of the land-dwelling insects in the past 30 years. And it may not seem like a large number, but in a 30-year span, that's a lot. And I love this cartoon. I remember as a kid going on road trips, and we had to stop, and my dad had to wash the window off, and I'm in my car a lot, and I never have to clean my windshield anymore. So. Anybody can see that there's a problem. So what is the problem? The problem is the threats to pollinators. I'm not going to get into all of these, although I would say I applaud our governor for instituting that new ordinance on light pollution for uh, state-owned buildings. I don't know when that's going into effect, but that was, um, that was one of the things he's done lately that is really commendable. What I want to focus tonight is loss and fragmentation of habitat because that is going on throughout town. Um, and why do we care about natives? Native plants are indigenous to this area, like I said before. If you lived in Florida, you would have different native plants. If you went to the Midwest, you'd have different native plants. So we're talking about specifically New England. And when it comes down to buying them or landscape or landscape architects, we make it simple by saying that it was, it was a plant that was here before the arrival of European settlers because they brought in a lot of things. Native plants, and this is a great chart that shows you how we can control water runoff, pollution, and purify water that's on our way to the aquifers just by their natural root system. Lawn grass, way on the left, that's not a native uh, grass. It's actually an unsustainable monoculture, which doesn't provide anything. And the reason we care about the pathway, or what we call the travel for pollinators, is because most of our native pollinators cannot fly very far, like the bumblebee. It only travels up to a mile. So we have to assure that that bumblebee has uh, food, uh, nesting, and um, reproduction all within that, that span. When we talk about native plants versus non-native plants, you can see the one on the bottom, the calorie pear. It's also known as the Bradford pear. That was very popular about 30, 40 years ago. It's from Asia along with the burning bush, and it, it, it doesn't belong here. It's all over our landscape. It was planted when people didn't know any better. So we're talking about key 
keystone plants in the Northeast, which are the white oak, two examples, white oak and the black cherry. They support 233 caterpillars. Those soft-bodied insects are what are the basis of our food chain. The chart on the right shows a leaf eaten. That's what we want to see. We want to see the plants in our environment eaten. That's why we, we plant them. This chart explains it all to where we are at the top. If we didn't have the producers, if we didn't have the native plants on the bottom that, go, that get eaten by the native insects, that get eaten by our birds, that get eaten by the tertiary consumers, the whole system would fall apart. That's a scientific fact. So my organization is very concerned about that. Um, Connecticut trees for pollinators. This is just a breakdown of what we would hope developers, homeowners, town property would use primarily on the grounds. The oak tree is the best tree. If you have enough room to plant an oak tree, that supports over 550 soft-bodied insects. So if you like to put out bird's nests and uh, see songbirds in your yard, they'll come if you have an oak or any of these trees. If you don't have these trees, you won't have songbirds because mm -hmm. in the spring, a male and female bird have at least four to five nestlings, and they take up to 9,000 insects for a 17-day period to feed those insect, to feed those baby birds. So um, these are the groups that are supporting um, native plants um, all over the United States. In fact, it's a global movement, and uh, I'm just really excited that my nonprofit is doing so well here in town. And, um, and I had to end on this because I just think it's hysterical. I'm a big Gary Larson fan, and I'm just looking at it from the insect point of view. They're capturing the fellow that usually captures them. Um, so I hope I've given you a little bit of background on why, why Pollinator Pathway exists. Um, one factor that limits our progress towards sustainability is the invasive plant problem in town. Now, the data collected by the Invasive Plant Working Group, which is an arm of Yukon, states that non-native plant species make up a third of the flora in New England. That's incredible. Now, I don't have any data specifically for East Lyme. I don't think anyone does. We don't even have a tree inventory of the trees in town on town property. Um, but I would like to mention quickly that we have several really bad invasive species um, and one I'd like to mention, because it's a public health issue, is the Japanese barberry. This is a colorful purple reddish leafed uh, plant from Asia. It's a shrub. And it's uh, liked by landscapers because people like the red color. It's deer and rabbit resistant. And uh, it's this beautiful color year round. Only one variety of this plant is banned from sale in Connecticut, unfortunately. All of this plant is banned in Massachusetts. It has a thorny, dense growth habit, which creates a microclimate that provides shelter in winter and summer for white-footed mice that carry the Lyme spirochete. It's the mice that carry the spirochete. Now, ticks also inhabit the barberry thick, dense, dense foliage because it creates coolness in the summer, and in the winter, it creates a warmth little microclimate. Now, if the, um, if the tick, if it's a nymph tick, and it goes to get its first blood meal, and it bites that white-footed mouse that's under the barberry, hibernating with it, and that mouse has the spirochete, then that nymph tick then has the spirochete infection. And if that tick were to bite us, then we are getting uh, that transmission via the tick. Now, there's a lead research doctor down at the Connecticut Agricultural Station, Dr. Williams, and he believes that we can reduce the tick population by 60% if we remove that plant. Now, this plant is all around town. It's planted in businesses, uh, gardens. 
It's planted at the community center garden uh, decades ago when we didn't know any better. And it's also planted, planted in Flanders School in front of the central office building. Now because of the plant's fruiting seeds, which are eaten by birds and other wildlife, it's invading Darrow Pond and acres in our forests. This situation and other invasive plant problems, we need to address, address it at some point, but um, that's a later discussion. But I would like to say that uh, with this insect decline, it is becoming increasingly clear that much of our insect life will not be able to sustain itself unless food, shelter, and nest sites can be found in the fragmented suburban sprawl habitats. And because it is we who decide which plants will grow, the responsibility of our town's biodiversity lies with us. Which insects and wildlife will make it and which will not? We make this decision every time we plant or remove a native species from our landscape. Now, I would like to be put on your September agenda to further address some specific key points that I brought up tonight on how we might implement, implement our pollinator proclamation into the workings of the town. I will come prepared with pertinent documents that the PPEL team and members of the CCNR are in the process of revising right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was hoping in the future we can suggest to developers to use the suggested planting she was talking about. And if we can at some point get a list of what's recommended for East Lyme, that would be great. Anybody have any questions or comments? Or? I, I hope I didn't put you no. <laughs> Are there specific zoning regulations that you have in mind or could bring back in September to encourage? We're Thank working you. on that. Good. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, I think we're up to, I don't believe we have any old business. Um, new business, anything by the commission? No? Uh, Mr. Mulholland, do you have anything tonight? I don't think Ann Anne can hear you. Ann Chakel can hear you. I just had a quick question. I noticed they were cutting down some bushes around Dunkin' Donuts. I didn't know what was going on with the landscaping there. Is there an avenue for complaints with the state as far as uh, the highway project? Is there? <laughs> there's a gigant. They created a gigantic pothole in the middle of the road. It's about six inches deep on the northbound side in the left lane, just past the bridge going northbound. Yeah, it's. It, it sends your car into a uh, death wobble when you hit it. <laughs> yeah.
That'd be great. You know, they claim ignorance when they don't know about it. Yeah. Isn't there a spot on the town website that you can pass comments up? I'm not sure. When you, when you click on the link to the highway project. I, I believe there is. Okay. Um. It's not coming up. I was just looking on the, okay. the website. I, is, I just, my phone isn't. You're up now anyway. Okay. So. <laughs> Hi guys, um, Ann Cicello, um, in standing in for Roseanne Hardy today, ex officio from the Board of Selectmen. Um, basically, I have two issues to discuss tonight. One is the Charter Revision Committee. Um, they've basically finalized their changes after discussing it and presenting it to the Board of Selectmen. Um, the Board of Selectmen met last night, July uh, 5th, and uh, sent it to referendum. Um, what that means is the town attorney put together, um, based upon Board of Selectmen's input and the Charter Revisions uh, final uh, revisions, uh, questions that would go on the referendum. So there's going to be 11 yes, no questions for the town uh, residents to answer on, the, um, on November 7th um, at, during the uh, voting. Um, also, um, there will be a mailer sent out explaining the questions that will be on the ballot November 7th, uh, giving clarification to voters so they can understand the questions that will be, um, sorry, it's not the referendum, on the, um, on the ballot November 7th. Um, so that's one thing. The other issue was we discussed short-term rentals and it was determined that we would form a subcommittee would be formed to discuss short-term rentals. That subcommittee in turn will come to the Board of Selectmen and present. That uh, subcommittee will be have um, one member from the Board of Selectmen, um, one member from Zoning Commission, and then some other residents from the community. So that's kind of it. Does anybody have any questions for me? I have an unrelated question. Sure. Um, Nick brought up bicycle racks, and I know zoning doesn't have a budget to buy them. Like, who who would buy those? So, you know, I was thinking about that when he spoke, actually, and um, I don't know. I didn't know if that could go through Park and Rec, or I was thinking there was the Niantic Main Street because they kind of like do the beautification of of Niantic. Because I, I think, think it's, it's a great idea. I have I ride my yeah. bike downtown and there's nowhere to put it. Yeah, and yeah. you want to keep it locked yeah. up, especially. So I think those were two. I mean, I'm just kind of thinking off the top of my head now, but um, yeah, I'm thinking either maybe Park and Rec or the uh, Niantic uh, Main Street. But what I will do is at the next Board of Selectmen meeting, I can bring it up and try to brainstorm with the Board of Selectmen. That'd be great. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? Anything. I guess not. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Um, were there any planning meetings, or did anyone go to any? I don't. We, we have on our schedule. Um, Mr. Peck will go July 18th, and then I think um, we'll have to ask our admin to redo the schedule to put Mr. Peterson in, and. He'll, he'll probably be scheduled after Mr. Pat, if we can make a note of that. Um, last thing we have in your packet was two pieces of updated correspondence from, um, I think it was believed from attorneys. So read that at le your leisure. And does anyone have anything else tonight? Or is there a motion to adjourn? A second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Words are Thank you.